Hello, welcome to the latest video. This one's about five ways, count them, five ways that pub rock has changed music forever. So what's so special about pub rock, you're asking? Well, some people are, because pub rock was so important in the history of music in Britain and the world, because let's face it, Britain is really the music capital of the world, despite the fact that we're quite small. One, pub rock returned music to the grassroots. You remember that in the early 70s, back then, there were lots of things happening and the mainstream music industry is all people like Cilla Black and Lulu and Val Doonigan. See if you know this one. I've got to leave old Durham town. And Tom Jones and Engelbert Humperdinck and people like that. That was on the telly all the time. Let's not mention the black and white minstrels. Do -da, do -da. Who mentioned them? And all stuff like that. So it's very mainstream, where the music industry had taken over and it was all progressive rock bands. This is my song. It's called Dancing with the Moonlit Night. Pub rock was a grassroots thing. It was a huge amount of different types of music. There was rockabilly, there was rock and roll, there was um, I was to say punk, but that hadn't started yet because it came out of the pub rock game. Rhythm blues, which is going back to the 60s, and there's blues, soul, and jazz funk. And what else was there? There was country music, there was ska and reggae, there was folk music. There's all different types of music. And you go to a pub and some pubs specialise in certain types of music and others just had different things on different nights. The more people you got in, the more you got paid. Some were free, some were 50p to get in. Sometimes it was a, a pound was the top end of scale back when it started. By the punk era, the mid 70s, then I got up to one pound 50, maybe two pounds. I mean, you could really push the boat out at two pounds, but that was about it. In the 1980s, I can remember when I was at the Cricketers at Kennington Oval, the most we would ever charge for a top line act would be five pounds. And that would be a really top line act. That'd be somebody like Dr. John or maybe Georgie Fame or somebody like that. So it's like top, but normally there's Saturday night, something like Steve Marriott. <laughs> Gino Washington. Or oh, Wilco Johnson would be four pounds. That gives you an idea of the pricing. So that was the first way in which pub rock has changed the world of music forever. What's number two? Number two, the rise of the independent record labels is all down to pub rock. There were independent record companies before then. For example, there was Virgin Records, there was Island Records, but they were formed by rich boys. Richard Branson, who formed Virgin, and Chris Blackwell, who formed Island, were already rich, their parents were rich, and it was a way of earning money. I think Chris Blackwell was more into the music than Richard Branson was, because I remember when I went to see Richard Branson in the late 70s that would be he didn't even have a record player on his houseboat so he couldn't play music couldn't play a tape couldn't play anything so that's how into music richard branson was i was in a board meeting when i was about 50 years old i think i said is that good news or bad news and, and one of the directors said come, come outside richard a minute so I came outside and said you don't know the difference between that and gross do you so i said no. The first one really was actually Chiswick Records. That was formed by Roger Armstrong and Ted Carroll, who were two guys that ran Rock On Records, who were like a record stall mainly in markets, like they did Soho Record Market, and they eventually opened Rock On Records in Camden, and that was their shop, and that's where everybody hung out in those days. When they started, it was like mainly rock and roll. Ted, I think, was very into rock and roll. He was the former manager of Thin Lizzy. Roger was more the businessman, I think. Ted was an enthusiast, and then, of course, Stiff Records. That was the one everybody remembers, though it's very strange. If you look now on lists of influential record labels, Stiff Records hardly ever gets mentioned, which is weird, because they were so influential at the time. Oh, yes, I love my label. It was formed by two guys again. The two guys that formed Stiff Records were Jake Riviera, who I first met in the very early 70s, though he didn't know who I was, and he was the roadie at the time, Andy Jackman of Chili Willy and the Red Hot Peppers. And I remember at the Office of Revelation Records, he came in with his expenses claims, and there's a bit of a row about it. I can't remember exactly what it was. This is a long time ago, 72, I think, or so something like that. By this time, he's called Jake Riviera, got a bit 
upmarket there. And um, his partner was Dave Robinson. He, he was the roadie for Jimi Hendrix for I don't know how long. And then he managed various acts, including Brindley Schwartz, who were one of the first pub rock bands. Of course, featured at Nick Lowe. So he was the manager of that, and of course, Stiff had the great marketing ideas. And I can remember we used to do work for him when I was working for a t shirt firm in the 1970s. We used to do badges and t shirts for them. Not all the time, because the guy who used to do all that, I can't remember his name, but there was a guy who used to be like their marketing guy, and he was a bit of a, shall we say, Fly. He was a bit like an Arthur Daly type, so he would go to various companies and he'd like play us off against each other. But that was all part of the fun, because back then it was so exciting. And of course, Stiff Records proves that it wouldn't have happened without Pub Rock, because it was started with a loan of £400 from Lee Brillo from Dr Feelgood. There's more to come, by the way. But please like it, press the ding-dong thingy, subscribe. Uh, and if you get a chance to look at my Patreon page, I'd be grateful, because there's extra things on there, and you won't believe how much I spend on getting stuff and software and all that. So anything helps, and there's more. The third way that pub rock changed music forever was, well, I mentioned this by mistake slightly earlier when I said that out of pub rock came punk and new wave. Now it's a huge subject. It's obviously true because the bands like The Dam, The Sex Pistols, etc., The Clash, well before them it was the 101ers, and then Joe Strummer joined The Clash, and all those bands started off playing in London as a pub. So without that, that outlet, I suspect that it would never have happened. It's a huge subject, as I say, too big for just a little segment of this. So I'll leave it at that. I'm gonna do a video about this and I'll do it in more detail. So what's next then? What could possibly be number four? Well, number four is Unsung Heroes. Because out of the whole pub rock game, because it was so diverse, there were lots of people playing, lots of bands, lots of solo acts, all sorts of things going on. And out of that came some very big names, some very big stars in the world of rock and pop by store. I mean, off the top of my head, I can think of Elvis Costello, I can think of the Pogues, who basically started off in pubs. There's Ian during the Blockheads, there's Dire Straits, there's all the punk bands I mentioned. There's just so many. And don't forget, bands like The Who and Kinks, they all started playing in pubs. So all this stuff about 1971 and the Tally Ho doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's the fourth one. Now, what's the fifth one? Well, actually, there isn't a fifth one. Well, there are. There's about 20 possible ones. But because I said it is a top five, I'll let you think of what the fifth one was. Oh, that's a cheat, isn't it? Sorry about that. And I'd like to say thank you for watching right the way to the end. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And if you can check out my Patreon page, link in the description, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Goodbye.